What's up beautiful houseplant friends? How are you? You already know I want you to drop a comment below and let me know how you are doing. Okay, so today's video is not gonna be one of those videos where you click and it's a whole bunch of beautiful plants and everything is going perfectly fine. Today's video, I am going to be showing you the honest truth of all of the plant problems I have right now. I put a poll up on YouTube asking you if you wanted to see my plant problems or plant updates. Majority of you all said you wanted to see my plant problems. And I have plenty of those for you, unfortunately. Times have been really weird. I just started my new job, but before that, I was kind of in this really low energy space. I don't know how to explain it. We're all kind of going through some sort of those emotions right now. That means that I kind of let my plants slide to the side as far as watering and things like that and just keeping up with them. And I know what you're gonna say, if you want a big houseplant collection, you do have to keep up with them. And unfortunately, this is real life. And we all go through phases in our life where we just don't feel like doing anything. And it's a perfectly human thing. So please, if you are going through the same thing, do not feel guilty. I know it might be difficult because a lot of the times we see on YouTube all of these beautiful plants and everybody's collections look amazing. I am here to tell you that you are not alone. That is not the truth all the time. So before we get started, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you have not already. Also drop a comment below. I love you all's comments. You know that. Another thing is if you want to leave a comment that is rude about this video, move on to the next video. I don't have time for that. If I wanna sit here on my channel and be honest with my subscribers, I know that my subscribers appreciate that. And if you are new to my channel and you have some opinion about how I haven't been caring for my houseplants properly, keep it to yourself. We're all good here. It's sad that I have to say that stuff, but anyway, let's just get started with this video. So I found thrips on my beautiful pasta Xanum maybe a week or two ago and it has been killing me. I don't think there are any on there right now for me to show you, but if I do see any, I will let you know. And I also wanna show you the damage that they have done. I'm sure you all have heard what thrips do, but basically what they do is they just scratch up the plant with their little mouths and that's how they eat. I mean, I freaking hate them. If you can see that, you can kind of see right here, those scrape marks. That is from thrips. So I know you've probably heard, but thrips, basically what they do is they scrape the plant with their little mouths and that's how they eat. I freaking hate them. Anyway, so that's what I've been dealing with and it sucks because you all know these are like my favorite, this is my favorite plant. I mean, and it really sucks. And I was going to move all of these plants over here somewhere else, but to be honest with you, I'm sure they're already affected. And if you could see, do you see those little scars right there? So the only other plant that I've actually seen these thrips on is my pasta Xanum, as well as, let me go show you, these two over here. So <laughs> my Monstera Thai Constellation, I don't know why this isn't focusing, but there we go. My Monstera Thai Constellation, and I think really honestly, that's it. And I've just been spraying everything. Like, is that, do you see that? So those, all of these little scars are from the thrips. I don't know if you can see that. Don't mind my dirty kitchen. So yeah, it really does suck, but it is what it is. And that's what happens when you own houseplants. Really, sometimes you just get pests. Oh, you know what? Let me show you the one that was affected the most. So, okay, I am up on the counter now and I just wanna show you the damage. Look at that. But it sucks because this thing was seriously thriving and it broke my heart to have to cut all of these freaking plants. It just, it drives me crazy. But anyway, it is what it is. Okay, so I wanted to pop on here and tell you all what I'm doing about the thrips. Every other day I am spraying all of these plants on this side of my house with a mixture of alcohol, one squirt of dish soap, and water. And that's every other day. If you want to do this, definitely would recommend doing it at night because if the alcohol is on the leaves during the day, it can actually burn the leaves. So just be careful with that, but I haven't had any negative consequences of spraying them every other day. I know it sounds a little dramatic, but that's just what makes me comfortable. I don't want this to get out of hand. And right now, it is pretty manageable. So. I would like to keep it that way. Also, I do have fungus gnat traps out because of course, fungus gnats, like it, who doesn't at this point? But, um, and yes, I am doing stuff I don't need advice on fungus gnats. I've just kind of let it fall off the wagon to be honest with you. 
And this video is gonna be really real. Like I'm not, I'm not gonna sit here and act like everything I'm doing is perfect because it's absolutely not. I just wanna tell you what I am doing. So I do have those fungus gnat traps and I know that thrips like blue from what I understand. Um, I don't have the blue ones, I just have the yellow ones. Maybe they're helping a little bit. I, I have no freaking idea. All I know is that the one thing that has been really working for me is the dish soap, alcohol, and water mixture. Also another thing is, is that thrips actually go inside of the tissue of the leaves to lay their eggs. Uh, so if you have a plant that's severely affected by thrips, I would highly recommend cutting off some leaves that look super damaged. And the reason being is, is that since it is under the tissue, even when you're spraying, it really might not kill those eggs. So you might have that chance of them hatching and you'll have to spray them and kill them as adults. You kind of want to attack all stages of life. It looks like I am going to have to cut the leaves of my pastazanum because it is pretty tore up. Really, it's going to be really hard to do that because I love that plant so freaking much. It is what it is and I'd rather have a healthy plant than have it suffering. So, so I did cut off the leaves of a lot of my plants and I can show you that right now. And then we can move on to mealybugs. Yeah, I hate them. Like I freaking hate mealybugs, but yeah. So let me show you what I did. Um, this guy hasn't had any issues. These plants I think are just super resilient. The um, Monstera Deliciosa is. And if you wanna see something positive, look, brand new leaf. Okay, so right here, look how pathetic this is. Is that not sad? <laughs> this was my beautiful Calathea medallion, which it does have a new leaf coming up here. I'll have to keep a close eye on it to make sure it doesn't have any thrips because they like that new growth, almost similar to mealybugs, but the reason I cut these leaves is because they're pretty dark and it was really difficult for me to see the thrips when I was spraying. So I just cut it all back because I didn't want to have to keep dealing with it. Um, okay, and right here, this was my Anthurium, well, I bought it as an Anthurium Spa Morona, but it's definitely not. Anyway, so yeah, I had to cut that one all the way back, which really sucks, but like I said, it is what it is. Okay, so right here is my Anthurium Afusilobum, and if you can see, it's down to one leaf. This damage right here is not thrips damage, but okay, can you see that little itty bitty bit of thrips damage? So there's that. Here's a better example of here. I know it's small, but really the ones I did cut off had more damage. Right here is my Anthurium bellatus, and you can see some thrips damage up there at the top right here. And that does suck. Right here is my beautiful Anthurium crystallinum. Yep. Um, now this, I'm not 100% sure what this damage is from. I honestly think it did not do well with that peppermint oil I was talking about. So I do have a sneaking suspicion that this right here is not from the peppermint oil. This right here is probably more than likely thrips damage and it is also down to one leaf. So really it's affecting all of my like favorite plants, which really sucks, but I've been keeping a close eye on my fiddle leaf fig and nothing. It doesn't have any thrips, which is really, really weird because it's all right here. This little guy right here, this is my Syngonium Pink Splash, I think. Never get that right, but you can see there is some thrips damage there. I mean, this one's down to really just these leaves, but this brand new leaf is doing really well. Okay, and I totally forgot to show you, but down here, this, it does have a plant in it. It, it really does, I promise. It's a Syngonium White Butterfly, and that plant was so full and beautiful, I, I cut it because I was sure that there was some thrip infestation in that plant. So I just cut the whole thing back and it broke my heart. Let me show you where this thrips issue actually came from. Right here in a tiny little pot, I had a little succulent. Crappy thing is, is the succulent came from my dad's house a few weeks ago. I didn't check it because it was a freaking succulent. Like I didn't think it had anything wrong with it, but turns out it had thrips. So here we are dealing with that crap. 
I really honestly have cut back all of my anthuriums. Like as you can see, this one only has two leaves now. My ace of spades only has one and it's just to prevent any further spread. So, well, let me show you the culprit. This beautiful orchid, along with two other ones that I actually had to throw away because it's very difficult to get rid of mealybugs on orchids. Can you see them? <sighs> it's so impossible to get rid of these on orchids. Okay, so because my back door is right here, I'm assuming that that wind caught some of these mealybug eggs and blew them over to my Deschidia imbricata. And this one's gonna be really hard to get rid of the mealybugs with, but I am spraying them every other day. And that's about all I can do, really. That is seriously all I can do. And I know once you see mealybugs or once you see anything like that, you are supposed to separate the plant. The problem is, is that I don't have anywhere to freaking put them. So they already have mealybugs and I legitimately have nowhere to isolate these plants. So I'm just gonna hope that spraying them every other day really helps with this situation. I need to spray this one and water it, but now I do wanna say if you have a serious, serious mealybug issue, take your plant, unpot it, wash the pot super well, really hot water, soap, wash it, let it sit out and dry, use brand new soil, take your entire plant that you just unrooted rinse the heck out of it with that shower head. I mean, just spray it down really good roots and all, and then spray it with that alcohol soap mixture should get rid of the mealybugs, maintain it though. Like a week later, you'll want to start that spray. That's what has worked with me in the past. And yeah, you just got to keep up with it. I forgot to tell you all this, but I am spraying those plants that have been affected spraying them down in the shower with a mixture, well first just water, just spraying them down really well with the shower head. And then what I'll do is grab a mixture of soap, water, and peppermint oil. Supposedly peppermint oil will deter any pests, so that's what I'm doing with that. And I don't mix the peppermint oil and the alcohol together because I don't want that to burn the leaves or anything like that. I feel like that would be too strong and too much of that like cold sensation on the leaves. So that's just me. That's just what I do. So anyway, we will now move on to powdery mildew. Okay, so here is where majority of my begonias are. Yes, they look very sad because all of them are cut back except for this angel wing one and my begonia coral because I have not seen any signs of powdery mildew at all on those. So that's really good. But what I will say is that I am no expert on powdery mildew. I don't know if y'all remember, but when I got this Begonia Sinbad, it, whoa, focus. So when I got the Begonia Sinbad, it actually did have powdery mildew and I was completely unaware of it. I sprayed it down and everything and put it out here thinking everything was okay, stupid me, but we learn from our mistakes. I'm not gonna be hard on myself about it. I'm just gonna try to do my best to keep up with this powdery mildew. It seriously spreads like freaking crazy. Please be careful when you are watering. Really, the one thing I would highly recommend is if you see it affecting your begonias, cut them back. Begonias are so resilient, they will grow back. I just cut this one back maybe three weeks ago and I think that's my Begonia Beningo. I mean, look at it, it's already thriving, it's doing really, really well. I cut everything back, and I'm hoping that continuing to spray and things like that and just cutting them back will help. Anyway, definitely 100% no expert on powdery mildew, like at all. But what I can tell you is that cutting them back and spraying them, keeping up with it, and making sure that when you're watering, you are not touching affected leaves, and watering with that same can because it does spread from spores. Just be careful with that. That's it, we'll move on. Here's me casually sitting on my couch realizing I forgot to film an outro to this video. I hope you like this video and I hope it also normalized these things. A lot of people are ashamed to admit when they have any issues with their houseplants, 
I'm here to let you know it's okay. We can't expect to have 100 or 200 plants in our house without any pest problems, without any disease, without any fungus. It's unrealistic. It's not perfect all the time. You, you cannot expect that. So I hope this normalized it. If you have any questions, concerns, advice, please feel free to leave a comment below, a very nice comment. I don't really get that many rude comments on my YouTube channel. There's four that I can think of off the top of my head. But if you're thinking about leaving a rude comment, just move to the next one because it's just, it's so unnecessary. People like that just blow my mind. Okay, so that is it. Um, I hope you all are doing well. For those of you who really actually care about like me outside of YouTube, my new job is great. I just can't wait to start working from home, which will hopefully be soon. But anyway, let me know how you're doing. And other than that, I think that's it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and I will see you on my next one. Bye.